What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today we're gonna to be talking about hacking vehicles, and no, I don't mean doing really bad repair jobs, I mean actually hacking into the vehicle, into the computer systems of the car, and causing disruptions. So this video actually comes on the back of a couple of things. One, Eric the Car Guy, my good friend, did a video on weaponizing cars a while back, and he hit on some really good points, and I actually think there's way more that we can add to that conversation of causing a disruption with a car. He and I both had the opportunity to meet Tony from Cal State, who is a professor and actually teaches vehicle security defense uh, to students, which is awesome. And if you want to get into the car business, that might actually be a really cool way to do it. But Tony was telling us a story about how hackers can hack into electric vehicles, disrupt their software, and actually cause charging problems. And then when you plug that car into the grid, it can bring the whole grid down. And that is a very real thing. You might be thinking, well, I don't drive an electric car, so why should I care? This problem is actually way deeper than just dealing with electric vehicles. I also had the opportunity to sit in a seminar about advanced driver assist systems, ADOS is what most people call it, and these are things like lane departure warning and adaptive cruise and blind spot monitoring, the little lights that blink in the mirrors that I find super distracting. And I don't know if the guy kind of went off on a tangent or he just kind of planned it this way, but we went down the road of vehicle security. And this guy is a pretty switched on dude and actually worked with uh, Homeland Security and a bunch of other governmental bodies uh, in the security defense area. And he was telling us this story that I swear this should be a movie, right? The short version of the story is a hacker could hack into a car download a virus when that car is back to the police station and plugged up. Said virus is now downloaded into the entire mainframe, and as cars are plugged in to their OBD port, uh, it'll download this bug into the car, and then with essentially a flip of a switch, all the emergency vehicles at one time are completely disabled. Now, we add in causing an actual problem, right? Blowing a bridge up or something like that, where every emergency vehicle is completely uh, rendered useless, essentially. So very, very crazy stuff. I really want to look at how this actually can happen. Now, don't think I'm giving hackers any ideas because these guys are way smarter than I am. These are just things that legit can happen. So how can we hack into a car? Let's say that we're looking at a vehicle like this new Touareg that we just got. It has keyless entry. So my key is sending a signal. My car is looking for a signal. In addition to that, it has actual tire pressure monitors in the wheels. These also emit a signal. So hacker can grab computer and start to look for these signals that the car is emitting, right? If I can hack into the tire pressure monitor and replicate that signal, now I have the ability to get into the ABS module. The ABS module is a main player of our vehicle's infrastructure, our vehicle's network. And now that I'm in the ABS module, I can send data packets anywhere I want. On a Volkswagen, for example, I can send data packets from the ABS module to the gateway module. Once I'm in the gateway module, doing things like reducing power steering or stopping the car automatically are just like the tip of the iceberg. Let's say I put a small bug in that car and then that owner, that owner has no idea, right? This could be three years from now, that owner goes in and gets a software update or has a check engine light. That technician will plug that into the OBD port. Now maybe my bug's implanted into that dealership network. It's planted into that manufacturer's network. Now I can bug all of these cars that ever get plugged into OBD with my bug, right? I can steal customer data. I can hack into the matrix. And, and get information from the manufacturer, which would be awesome if it was repair information because they're surely not free giving of that. I'm pretty sure criminals are not looking to steal repair manual information. They want customer information and to cause serious disruption. That, however, all requires vehicles to be plugged into something, right? We have to have that vehicle plugged into an OBD port. By the year 2020, they're predicting that about 90% of vehicles will be connected to the internet. And that shouldn't surprise any of us at all. And it might even be more than that because think of that car that's maybe a 2013 that has Apple CarPlay that is connected to your phone that's probably also connected to the internet. We can go even deeper down this rabbit hole as we move forward in time. 
Think about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. One of the main things that's gonna really need to happen for autonomous vehicles to be mainstream is V to V. This car talking to this car, telling it where it's at, telling it what's going on. How do we defend against this car being a bug car, right, and shooting data across the whole city before you even know it in a matter of minutes, right? Or what about V to I, vehicle to infrastructure, the vehicle talking to the stoplight, talking to the building, talking to a bridge that opens and closes for boats to go under, talking to all kinds of other vehicles and trucks and helicopters. I don't know. It could go crazy. All of these things are things that are happening, things that are coming. 5G is coming. And as we get this new world of vehicle communication, security becomes insanely important. Guys, I will fully admit, I did not give vehicle security that much thought. Vehicle security to me was lock your car. Make sure you don't leave your keys in it. Hide that stuff that you left on your seat, right? Don't leave your disc man. This is it. Don't leave your disc man on your seat because someone will steal it. But it's really so much more than that today than it ever was. And it's not going to be less important. It's only going to get more important as our cars are more connected. Our cars are connected to each other. They're connected to infrastructure. They're connected over the air. What about over the air updates, right? This is something I think Tesla does already. You have a vehicle driving around, connected to the internet. It downloads a new update patch for some weird thing. Now, I actually think at this point, electric vehicles are probably among the safest because they are considering this so heavily. But what about other vehicles that maybe they're not putting so much emphasis on it because it doesn't have all this connectivity? It still has drive-by wire. It still has electric power steering. Even if it's not steer by wire, we can still disrupt that assist and you're probably not going to be able to out steer a motor trying to turn your wheel all the way one way or the other. We also have the ability to hack into braking systems. We also have the ability to hack in via telematics. Remember OnStar, right? All these things are hackable. All these things can cause disruptions and it goes beyond bringing down the grid Y2K style. It can be far more insidious than that. The more code and the more computing power we put into our vehicles, the more we open it up to being hacked. Again, hacking in to a vehicle through a tire pressure monitor is crazy to me, but when you think about the infrastructure of a vehicle and how it's connected and how that architecture works with each other, you go, oh, that's pretty reasonable. And yeah, a dude with a computer across the parking lot could hack into your car and do whatever. If they hack into your car, does that mean they could hack into your phone? I don't know. Phones, vehicles are already tracked. Vehicles and car manufacturers are using their GPS technology to map roads. These are all things we're gonna need for autonomous vehicles. So this does go far beyond that one Ford that the guy was able to steer with a computer down the road. It can, that, that, don't get me wrong. That's crazy stuff and that could cause a lot of problems, but it can be way, way bigger than that and a way more serious issue. This is a topic I have been fascinated by and terrified by kind of all in the same breath. It's very interesting how manufacturers are going to adapt to this because guys, I really think it's the manufacturers having to adapt. The hackers are usually a couple steps ahead and uh, the manufacturers are the ones that are having to keep up or try to get ahead, but it's here, it's happening, and props to the people that are in that world that are fighting this, you know, vehicle cybercrime. Vehicle cybercrime is going to be a division of the police department one day. I really believe that. Now, I know what you're thinking. Charles, I'm never going to buy a new car again. I'm going to drive my 75 Camaro forever. Well, maybe, and that's awesome. And believe me, you know, I, I love technology and vehicles, but I also appreciate that old school get in your car and drive. But Guys, understand that we that feel that way are a very, very small minority of people. Most people don't treat their vehicles like we do. Most people just want to get in. They don't even want to turn the key. They want to get in, they want to hit the button, and they want to go where they're going, or they want the car to go where they're going. So it's us that is the minority, and of course, the manufacturer is going to cater to the majority. That only makes sense for them to do that. But it's fascinating stuff. I'd love to hear your comments on this topic. Drop that down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.